I've never said the word president followed by the word Trump. I'm Alana Glazer, and this is Cheat Sheet for the Voting Booth. Today's episode is all about Florida. Yes! I am so fucking thrilled to have this talented mute joining me today. She was one of the members of the iconic pop group Fifth Harmony. She broke out and had her own huge solo career. And the thing that blows me away about this person is that she consistently uses her enormous platform to advocate for human rights. Give it up for Lauren Reggae! An intro, thank you. I mean, you really have, Lauren. You give voice to stuff like fighting the Dakota Access Pipeline, protecting Dreamers, protecting the Affordable Care Act. When did you start advocating? I'm not gonna front. Like, when I was in the group, I kind of, you know, I didn't really resonate too much with kind of what we were doing artistically. I didn't feel like my heart or my soul was being stimulated or on fire, you know what I mean? And so I honestly think that that's kind of where it stemmed from a bit, because it was something that I could um, give a voice to that was really something I was passionate about outside of just music. Like, there's so much going on and there's so much to to talk about, but at the same time, for me, it's all intersectional, you know what I mean? Everything builds off of everything because everything is one. Tell me your relationship with Florida. I grew up there. I'm born and raised in Miami. My dad was born in Miami as well, but my mom was born in Cuba. And so my grandparents on both sides are Cuban immigrants. Very family oriented. It's like, you know, we're, we're moving in American society, but like ideals and morally and like foundation wise, very Cuban. You know, you know what I mean? I don't know how to explain that, but my Cuba is not. I feel like Miami naturally has like a Latinx, Hispanic energy to it. Um, and a lot of the population is made up of Latinx people, whether that's from Cuba or Puerto Rico or Dominican Republic or Venezuela or Colombia or Brazil. There's a lot of different people from all over there um, who really make a home and community vibe in Miami. And so I really grew up within that community. I want to talk about Biden. Let's do it. He's not my savior, but I am so sick of Trump claiming the presidency that I'm going hard for Biden this year. Where are you at? To be honest, I'm more I'm more focused on local elections in terms of my passion because again, I've seen how much local officials are really genuinely in control of what actually happens to you and your family and your boroughs and your neighborhoods and you know what happens with your personal taxes, you feel me? Because like, you know, a percentage of what gets collected from us goes to the federal government, but the majority of what's collected from us goes to our state. You know, just to like let you know, this whole series that we're doing, it's like this trade-off um, that we're able to make this happen where we're talking about Biden. And it's a level of a conversation about Biden that I don't think anybody else is having because they're just like so scared that they're like, go Biden, go. And, you know, I love the nuance. That's why I wanted to do this, because I love that you are aware that he's there. That administration is not our savior. Agreed. But I think Biden is a far better choice. Electing Biden, which needs to be by a landslide, 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 is the safer option for more people and a step in the left direction, in the better direction. I completely feel you, not our savior, but I am starting to get excited about some of Biden and Harris's policies. Biden believes in science. Ding! Ooh, point. (laughs) He believes that the climate crisis is real. He has a huge proposal for dealing with the imminent climate crisis. This is the most ambitious plan ever released by a major party nominee for president. He developed this with Bernie Sanders and climate Ooh. activists and active policymakers. Imagine having people who actually have expertise in their field being the people who run the governmental part of that field. That's such a concept we really run away from, isn't it? Another thing is that Biden supports creating a federal civilian corps of unarmed first responders that includes social workers, EMTs, and trained mental health professionals to handle nonviolent emergencies. A huge step is eliminating who gets to interact with the public who's asking for help. And I'm like all about, I wanna, I wanna defund the police, but even just the idea of adding mental health professionals 
helps. Like, you now have a check and balance system where it's not just you and your fucking gun and you're the sheriff, you know? Mr. Joseph Biden wants to raise the national minimum wage to $15. Oh! Imagine, imagine paying someone a living wage. Imagine people being able to work one fucking job and living their fucking lives. Okay, Lauren Hurry, can I ask you something? Yes, please. Does this mean you're voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? Yes, I am definitely voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. <laughs> I am so horny <laughs> to vote this year. <laughs> I'm like wet for it. Oof. Oh God. I'm getting really horny for November 3rd. Uh, mm. Just when I think about getting in that booth all alone. Just does something to the body. Oof. I'm really in that zone. Wow. I could come right now <sighs> at the thought of a democracy. So here's a pitch. Take a sexy fucking picture of yourself, a thotty thotty thirst trap. You hashtag horny for the polls, caption swipe for a surprise, and then post our cheat sheets. We are passing around cheat sheets to the swing states to get progressive candidates elected down ballot. It's a fucking win-win. Let's get people who are fighting for basic human rights elected with our sexy fucking bodies. Let's check out the stakes. In 2016, 45 won Florida by 1.2% of the vote. That's a razor thin, tight, pussy tight so margin. That makes my heart hurt. The governor in 2018 won by 0.4%. The Republicans out there are so slimy, man. State House District 26 was won by a Republican by 61 votes. State House District 89 was won by 32 votes. Okay, those numbers are a joke, but 45 won Florida by 100,000 votes. That makes me say Florida's fucking progressive. I definitely can feel the that people are tired of the same shit. You know what I mean? People are really tired of like just defaulting to their to their dad's politics. Right. Especially for the Latinx community. Because I feel like a lot of Latinx people naturally align with Republican values is what they think. I, I understand why people think that that's what they want to believe, right? So <clears throat> I understand that, but then there has to be a line drawn when you see someone like Trump in office. You know what I mean? There has to be a point where you you have to take a step back and be like, is this really what I think I'm trying to preserve or conserve? Vote beyond, you know, I'm blue or I'm red. Like vote beyond that and just vote with your integrity, vote with your heart. Like who do I really think is gonna do something for me, for my family, and for the homeless woman across the street that I see every morning when I wake up. Like, it, it, is that woman gonna be impacted by who I vote for? Because if they are, then you probably shouldn't be voting for that person. If you're the only one that can benefit from a vote, you have to think about what that vote's weight is for real. You know what I mean? For everyone who gets affected negatively. This planet depends on this election. Humans need to fucking wake up. Like, we, we really gotta stop playing around. Like, this is beyond serious. Yemaya is pissed. We're not even prepared for what Mother Nature is capable of doing to us. Because we think we're like, you know, the stewards of the earth and the end all be all of existence. But at the end of the day, bitch, we're specs. We're ants on earth. And if earth wants to, if Gaia wants to, she will wipe us the fuck out. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. <laughs> so here are, Lauren, the down ballot candidates that you love so much. Ricky Juntera is running for election in House District 118. Ricky is a proud Cuban American and a dedicated community activist. Some policy issues he's gonna advocate for, stricter gun laws, thank you, investing in small businesses and increased access to Medicaid. Let's go, Ricky Junquera. We love you. Tamiette Thomas is running for election in House District 15, a woman of God and a leader. She is the associate pastor of the Innovative Empowerment Church. If elected, she will advocate for affordable health care and Medicaid expansion, honesty, justice, and equality for all, and financial stability for working families and small business owners. Give it up for Tamiette Thomas. Tamiette Thomas, we love you, Tamiette. That's a beautiful, beautiful platform. And we love a woman of God.
In House District 89, Jim Bonfiglio is running. Jim lost this seat in 2018 by only 32 votes. So rather than feel sorry for himself, he's like, okay, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna run again. He's a lawyer who's concentrated exclusively in repping wronged consumers facing home loss to mortgage lenders since the late 80s. For decades, he's gonna advocate for common sense gun reform, please. He also is gonna fight for the right to a free, accessible, and equitable public education. We love Figlio! And environmental protections for Florida. I love a local rep who's gonna fight for environmental protection. Someone actually said that yeah. as a part of their yeah. proposition? Jim wow. Bonfiglio. I'm, I mean, beyond shred of a doubt gonna vote for that man. Yes. Commit to voting and make a voting plan. If you can vote early in person, sick. If you're gonna be voting by mail, request your absentee ballot right now, like literally like, it takes two seconds when you get off of this, just go do that. A generator video has a simple format to make it easy to use your social media to talk about politics and government and humanize policy. My name is Lauren Hauregui. I'm from Miami, Florida, and technically living there right now, but right now I'm in Los Angeles. One thing I love is the ocean. I think one of the biggest issues I have, the lack of accountability. I think that that's like a huge underlying system flaw that leads to a lot of the rest of the issues. You know what I mean? Um, our inability to confront our past, our inability to reckon with that and um, make amends for it. Thank you so much for being down, open to me, and for committing to using your enormous platform for realness. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this, and thank you for your passion and your quirky ass. I love you. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Feeling extra? extra. If you're not in a state that we talked about today, Vote Save America has made it easy for you to adopt a state and get people registered and voting for Joe Biden. Here it is. Ho! See you next Tuesday, LOL, for the next episode of Cheat Sheet.